So we are moving to our topic database management system. So first we explain about uh, the term which is called data. Data is a fact that can be recorded and stored. We know that the data can be of different types that can be in text format, in numerical format that is numbers, can be an image or it can be a video. So these are some of the examples of data. Now we are going to discuss about a database. What is a database? We know that uh, a lot of data is available uh, nowadays and uh, they may be related in some manner. Actually the database is a collection of related data. That means the data that are related in some manner. So as an example, I am giving uh, two uh, two uh, information that is two data two uh, the first one is uh, anju and it's uh, second the meaning of the second field or second uh, column is uh, the house name of that uh, person and let the third column represent its corresponding uh, location that is where the particular person is laid so actually if you see uh, the first uh, values that is anju anjali edapalli like that if you see it you can see it's a collection of text only. But actually what is the meaning of this data? We said that the data can be in any format and the text is one of the format. And uh, what is the meaning of the uh, all this text? Actually, this its meaning is that all this text are related in some manner. Related means, uh, here the meaning I used is the information about a person, that is the house name, the location that is described as uh, a set of data. So in that manner, if you are taking the second example also, its meaning is saying that is Minu is the name of the person, let Manjiri be the name, house name and Kuchin be uh, the location of that person. So this is an example of it. Like that we can uh, store a lot of such informations can be stored uh, in, a, in some manner. So its, its collection is called a database. And there are various types of databases are available uh, like uh, a traditional database, multimedia database, real-time database, geographic information systems. So they are some of the examples of database and how it differ. A differ means that uh, the type of data stored inside the database based on which we divide the database into different categories. In the first category is a traditional database that is a database which are used commonly in many application and uh, here for example uh, in the case of a college, uh, the college want to store all the information about the students like student name is there, maybe the register number will be there, or admission number will be there, address and phone numbers etc will be there, date of birth will be there. So uh, in that case we, we represent each of this data as numbers or text. Uh, so that is traditional database. In multimedia database, the data is in the form of images, videos, audios like that. So that type of database is called multimedia database. And if you come to the third category, real-time database, that is the data which are uh, available in real time. So like uh, which are mainly used in different production, etc. So such data can be stored in real-time database. And the last we explained here is the geographic information system. We know that the meaning or uh, the term geographic means something is related to satellite. So in here, in this database actually our aim is we want, if you want to store the images which are taken by the satellite and if you want to store them in a database and we will use the term uh, geographic information system. So basically all these databases are, uh, uh, it's a collection of uh, interrelated data. But uh, based on the type of data we are storing inside the database, we divide, we call it as uh, using different names. So now uh, we are coming to the next point that is for data warehouse. What is a data warehouse? We know that in normal meaning of warehouses, it's a store that is large volume of something we are storing in a warehouse. And if we are using the term data warehouse, we know that it is something related to data. That is mainly it is a database, it's a, it's a kind of database, but it contains a huge volume of data, uh, like uh, historical data. 
For example, if you are considering any one company, for example, uh, let it be a Samsung, and uh, suppose it started its uh, um, uh, company started in 1960, let it be, a, it's not like that, but I'm giving it as an example. Uh, suppose it started in 1960, and uh, suppose it has a database which, ho which store the items which are produced by the, um, uh, that company, uh, then the model name, uh, everything related to each and every model, uh, the customers or anything, any kind of such information may be stored inside their database. And if you are taking the year from 1960 to 2020, uh, uh, we know that a, a lot of, uh, that is uh, nearly 60 years are there. And if you are storing the 60 years data in a database, we can call it as a data warehouse. Now we are coming to our point that is what is database management system. So, so far we explained what is data, what is database. Now we are coming to database management system. So, it is very simple to uh, uh, give the uh, definition of database management system. So, first of all I am just dividing in order to understand uh, the concept. I am just dividing the DBMS into two parts. The first one is so you know that its full form is database management system. And DBMS is divided into two parts. The first part I am taking as database and the second part I am taking as management system, short form is MS. So what is a database? We know that a database as we explained, it is a collection of interrelated data. So suppose we are stored the interrelated data somewhere or we are, its, it's collection is called database. Now we are coming to the next part that is a management system. So what is management system? That is any system that is used to manage something. So, uh, here the management system is a set of programs uh, which are used to store and uh, retrieve data from a database. So, we already have a collection of data which are interrelated. Suppose we want to take some data, we have to store new data. So, everything needs to be done. So, with the help of some programs, we are going to do such things. So, it is called a management system. So, when we combine database management system, that means we have to write the definition of database as well as management system. So, it's a collection of, first of all, I am going to explain the definition of database. It's a collection of interrelated data and a set of programs in order to store and retrieve data. So, as we said, there are different, uh, uh, different things we have to do in a database. Uh, you know that if you have a, in your class, suppose that if 30 students are there, you know that in your class 30 students are there. Suppose a new student is coming to your class. So, in, uh, we already have a database that you, that store all the information about the each and every student of your class. Suppose a new student is coming, we have to store the new student information into the existing database. So, in that case, we have to insert the new data into the database. And suppose that if any one student is, uh, 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 that is, uh, uh, he is not continuing or discontinuing uh, his or her studies from this college, uh, in that case we have to remove the information from the existing database because it is not the active one already completed. So we want to remove that one from the database. So in that case we have to delete it. Then we want to create a database. We want to de de define a database. De de defining means we want to um, decide which all information need to be stored. Normally, if you are taking a student, the admission number, the register number, the name of the student, the class, the address, phone number, these are the common things used in a database. So we have to, we can design or we have to design which all fields each student must have or that database must have. So that is the meaning of defining. Constructing means we are creating that one. Manipulating means, as I said, we can insert, we can update, we can um, delete. So everything can be done uh, using set of softwares. And uh, some of the examples of softwares that are used to manage the database is MySQL, Oracle, like that. So what is the use of the database? Why we are using the database? So we will study what are the advantages, but simply we are, if you are telling about a database advantage, um, it is very fast. It is, uh, we can easily access data from a database. So you all know that we are using uh, uh, intranet or uh, uh, intranet uh, facility of the college. And suppose I, I, me as a teacher, if I want to search the details of a particular student in a particular class, it is possible. 
because the data are already available in database. I just want to use their admission number, their name or anything like that or any combination of them. Uh, I can easily access that data from the database. It is very simple. So that is the main advantage. We can access in a very fast and it is also very convenient. So because if it is a new user, if that user is not familiar with the programming or anything, he just want to give the details as specified uh, by giving the de these details, uh, every information related to that one will be displayed on the screen. So that is the main advantage of the database. Then there is one term is there that is called what is database system. So actually database system is a collection of database and DBMS. Okay, it's collection we are calling it as a database system. That means actually it is a collection of data, that is database. And it is a DBMS is um, it's a collection of programs. Its combination is called a database system. And as I said, this is the definition actually. DBMS, you can call it as the advantage of DBMS. That is, DBMS contains information that is normally we are storing which type of information in the database, uh, which is related to any particular. Uh, so, it is normally related to any one organization or an interface, like uh, it can be a, a college or a, a information or database, maybe the data for a particular uh, company, like that. So the second point is that we can access, uh, it contains a set of programs to access the data and we can access the data in an, uh, it make an environment in order to access the data in an efficient and uh, effective manner. So if uh, any question is there to define the DBMS, we have to write or we have to write all these programs, all these points. That is the first one, uh, it contains, normally contains information about particular enterprise. Second point is it is a collection of data. So you remember we divided the DBMS into two parts, database and management system. So first you write the definition of database, collection of interrelated data. Then management system is a set of programs in order to access the data. And what is the advantage of DBMS? Actually it makes an environment in order to access the data in an efficient and effective manner. Now we can uh, write, uh, we can specify different areas where we are using the database. Um, most of the students may be coming from computer background, computer science background. So they may have done the project in any of the field or these fields. Some other fields are also there. Here I am just explaining some of the areas where we are using the database. I am not going in detail because uh, we all know what are the details we are stored in this type of database. Uh, in, in these areas. The first one is banking. Banking means we are using, uh, we are storing the details about the customers, different transaction done by each customer or different transaction which is done in each day, each month, each year. So everything will be stored there. And in the case of airline, uh, the airline that is flight details, the passenger details, uh, everything will be stored. And in universities, uh, it includes uh, different uh, registration done by the students or the uh, grades, like that, everything will be stored. Like that, these are the most commonly used areas uh, where we use the database. And actually, we can say that database touch in all, our, all the aspects of our life. Then why we are using the database? In earlier days, that is, uh, before using the database, file systems were used in order to store the information, file system. Uh, that is, as files, we will be storing the details. But the file system has different uh, drawbacks are there. The first drawback is data redundancy and inconsistency. That is, uh, suppose that uh, I have a file of uh, uh, students are there that may be stored in different formats. Actually, data is available. Suppose I want to combine uh, S1 and S2 together, S1 A batch and B batch together. And let the one A batch is uh, name list of A batch is in one format and uh, let the B batch is uh, in another format. If I want to combine them, it is very difficult for me to combine. And that is the one uh, drawback, that is they may be in different format. The second drawback is that duplication will be there. That is in different files, the same information will be stored. So that is one advantage of the file system. So remember that uh, here I am going to explain the advantages of DBMS. 
So in order to explain the advantages, I want to explain uh, the file system which were used just before the database management system. So file system has a different uh, drawbacks were there. So here I am going to explain each and every drawback of the file system and these drawbacks are advantages of database management system. So the second drawback is of file system. Remember that here I am explaining the drawback of file system which are the advantages of uh, database management system. So the second one is the difficulty in accessing data. We know that in the case of file system, suppose that if you want to, uh, if you want to take data from uh, a database, or get data from a file, if you want to write something to a file, etc., we want to write program. So you may have done uh, C programming. And in C programming, uh, you wrote uh, the code in order to access data from a file. So there we will explain the, uh, the file name, we will explain uh, the type of uh, uh, that is accessing, that is whether we are going to do reading, writing or, uh, or editing, whatever we are going to do, we will specify in the C program. So there how we are writing the program, you will write a C program, inside that you have to specify, you have to write code uh, in order to take each and every field from that file or each and every details from that file, which is not an easy task. Okay, that is the second drawback of uh, file system. And the third one is the data isolation. Data isolation means, as we said, the multiple files, uh, data may be in different files and different formats. Then integrity problems. Integrity problems means that, suppose that um, we are conducting, uh, that means uh, we are conducting an MC admission and there we have to store the details of students who got 50 percentage of mark in uh, degree. So in that case, uh, if you are storing all these details inside, inside a table, we have to specify a constraint that is uh, the total mark should be 50 percentage. Okay, that is a constraint. Uh, so if you are writing such constraint in a normal file system, we have to write it as a code. That is explicitly we have to specify inside the code that this is the condition. If the condition is met, then only we can enter the value to your file. So it is not an easy task. And if you are doing it, the drawback is that suppose if you want to change the integrity constraint, we have to make changes. Suppose if you want to add a constraint, suppose uh, um, uh, the condition is changed, that means admission procedure is changed. Uh, the student must have 50 percentage, 55 percentage of mark. So in that case, we have to do modification to the current code, which is not an easy task. Okay, so adding new constraint and uh, existing constraint, changing existing constraint, uh, which is very difficult task in the case of existing file system. Then the next drawback is the atomicity of updates. Atomicity means that, uh, suppose that, I will give an example. Uh, suppose I am, I have an account in Fadiba and I am in, uh, I am going to uh, add, let the bank balance is 1000 rupees. In my account, 1000 rupees is there. Suppose I am going to add uh, 2000 rupees to my account. That is, I am doing a transaction in which I am going to uh, invest uh, 2000 more rupees to the uh, bank. So, suppose that if some kind of failure occurs, that is before doing the uh, transaction, that is before performing the updation, if something happened, I already paid the 2000 amount to the bank, but because of some failure, network failure or something like that, the updation is not done perfectly. So, whenever next time I am checking my balance, it may be 1000 itself, but already I uh, already the my account contains 3000 rupees. So that is one of the uh, one of the problem of the uh, existing file system. That is called in, inconsistent. The database will be in an inconsistent state. That is, its, its transaction is not completely done before that some kind of kind of failure. So that is uh, one problem. This, uh, that is called atomicity updates. Atomicity update means before doing some transaction or before doing some function, uh, some task on a database, uh, something, some failure occurred and the task was not complete. So that is the meaning of the atomicity of update. Then the last drawback of uh, file system is concurrent access by multiple users. 
So you already studied operating system where there is a concurrent problem were there. That is suppose A and B are two persons who are sharing a particular account. And uh, suppose the account contains 500 rupees. Uh, simultaneously A and B are doing transaction on that account. A is going to in uh, going to add 500 rupees to the account. That is suppose A, B are two persons. They are sharing common account. The existing balance of the account, let it be 500. A is going to put 500 rupees to the existing account. So we know that it contains, so now if it is, it is doing first, the account must contain 5000 rupees. Then at the same time, B is trying to withdraw 500 from the, or the withdraw 500 from the account. So we know that what will be the actual value? A is doing 5000, A is adding 5000 rupees to the bank. Existing balance is 500. <coughs> A is adding 500 to the bank. So 500 plus 500 is 50,000. B is taking 500 from the bank. So from the 1000, 500 is given to B. So what we expect is the account contains net value that is 500. Suppose that if it is not performing in the right order, there may be some problem. That is concurrent access. Concurrent access means that simultaneously the two persons are doing a uh, transaction on the same account. So that may cause certain problems. So in operating system, we also studied that uh, there is if two persons are trying to, uh, if sharing any variable and they are trying to access that variable, there is a condition which is called a race condition. And here also it is similar to that. And these are the main drawbacks of file system. So what are the main drawbacks? The first one, data redundancy and inconsistency. That is, data may be in different format. Data may be, uh, duplication will be there. Second is uh, difficulty in accessing data. Difficulty in accessing data means that, difficulty in accessing data means that here, uh, it is very difficult to access the data uh, if you are storing it as file, then data isolation. Data isolation means the data will be in different uh, formats. Then comes uh, the uh, integrity problems. That is, if you want to specify any constraints, that is, uh, any particular type of value can only be stored uh, in, in, uh, inside the file. We may want to write code for specifying the rules, for specifying the condition, which is not an easy task. Then atomicity problem. Atomicity problem means that uh, suppose uh, if uh, any kind of transaction is occurred in a data database or something, suppose if the data um, failure, if any kind of failure occurs, the changes may not be reflected. So that is the database can be in an inconsistent state. And the last drawback is concurrent access by multiple users. Whenever multiple users are trying to access the same uh, database, uh, some or the same file or something, some kind of inconsistency will be there. So in order to avoid the security problems, that is also uh, one more problem in file system. That is whenever we are creating a file system, suppose if we want to give certain uh, priority or certain uh, uh, that is uh, which type of user must uh, have given the rights, access rights. We know that whenever we are creating uh, any file, we can give different access rights. That is this much a person can only do reading, this much a person can only do writing or editing. Uh, we are not uh, going to do access to certain uh, class of uh, people. Like that we can give uh, that uh, access rights. So in security problems, uh, here it is, uh, in the case of file system, it is very difficult to provide the security portions, that is the access rights and like that. Uh, that is the, uh, the persons can only, um, so some persons can only access some of the data from the database. Uh, some cannot use, uh, some can access uh, all the data from the database like that. So for example, in the case of college also, in the college database, a lot of informations are available. Uh, a huge amount of data will be available. 
as a student you can only access some of the data that is the database administrator uh, is giving some provision to students but as a faculty we are giving some more privileges okay and in top level they have more privileges are given so here we are just dividing the access rights that is we are dividing the access of data into different classes for students one part of the database is available for teachers some more parts are available and for the top level management the entire data will be available so like that so these are the main uh, drawbacks of the file system actually file system has our failures in all these areas in order to overcome this drawback the database management system uh, introduced and it has different solutions in order to solve each and every problem so this is very important question it is a university question most commonly used university question the question can come in two ways the first one is what are the drawbacks of file system that is one way of uh, question the second one is what are the advantages of dbms over file system so actually whatever may be the question the aim of the answer or the answer will be same first of all you have to write the drawbacks of the file system and uh, can, uh, we can conclude the point that uh, existing file system has all these drawbacks are there so uh, database management system is introduced which provide different facilities that is all these drawbacks can be uh, drawbacks are uh, uh, have solution in the case of database management system That's that's all for this uh, video.